Welcome back, everyone, to Issues of Faith. We are talking with Dr. James P. Byrd, Associate Professor of American Religious History at Vanderbilt, talking about Thanksgiving, the religious nature of the holiday, the history of the holiday, and what about the Protestant nature of this holiday? How much, um, how important is that? It, it's very important. Uh, it's easy for us to forget how Protestant the nation was. I mean, if you think about it, church attendance statistics are very hard to come by. But when you think about it, in 1860, just right around the Civil War, right before the Civil War, as the Civil War started, uh, there were about 50,000 Protestant churches in the United States. And compare that to how many Catholic churches there were, about 2,500. And there are only about 70 Jewish synagogues. So that tells us something about how influential Protestantism actually was during that period. And mainly we're talking about Methodists, Baptists, and Presbyterians. So Protestantism was part of the culture. And if you think about it, the Protestant ethos in the church was filling in for the federal government. I mean, we think about the government as this huge thing. But at that time, the federal government was not huge. It was not small. Like in the mid-19th century, there were about as many Methodist ministers as there were postal workers. Now, think about, that's just the Methodist ministers. Right. And that tells you something about how small the government was overall. I mean, if you, there were just and about as many Methodist ministers. And the federal budget, like in the mid-19th century, was about the same as the combined budgets of the Protestant churches. Really? So it was a much smaller government the churches provided a lot of what we might call social services that the state or the government would later provide. So and Protestantism churches were very powerful, yes. right? I mean, that's where, uh, how powerful were they? Yeah. What, what, what sorts of things, that's one thing you just said, they, mm -hmm. they gave sort of, the, they were the social safety net in many ways. Right. Um, and, and they helped, what, what about with legislation or that kind of thing, just well, their power? they were powerful, I mean, we had the idea of separation of church and state, but what that really meant was that Congress would not establish a religion, not establish one. Didn't mean the states couldn't. And states, some of the states, especially in New England, had established churches up into the 19th century. So it just said Congress shouldn't establish a religion or a particular denomination. Um, so there so was an idea. So states had established Some religion? states had. Now they got, they faded out as right. the 19th century went along. But still there was this idea that churches were very important to the society. So like on Thanksgiving days, for instance, when we would have these occasional Thanksgiving days um, in different states, some states would have days and some states wouldn't, um, they would, there would always be sermons that would, accom that would accompany the Thanksgiving days. And these sermons were printed, they were very important, um, and sermons were an important part of communication. I mean, if you think about colonial America, you didn't have television, didn't have the internet, anything like that, didn't have that many newspapers, the sermon was the time when most people came together, and they had sermons, like in the Puritan New England, they had sermons on Sunday, and they had usually a lecture on Thursday. Those were public events, and those were events where people heard about politics as well as religion. And so then you fast forward to when Abraham Lincoln established Thanksgiving as a holiday mm -hmm. in, the, in the context of the Civil War and the divided country. Mm -hmm. Politically, what, you, you said there was a woman who was pushing it, it was very important to her. Right. Politically, what was he likely thinking? What were the advantages? We have to remember Lincoln had many concerns, uh, many concerns on his mind. His, his presidency was bounded by war. I mean, he was at war the whole time. Uh, and he was mainly concerned, obviously, he was concerned about slavery. He was also concerned about the Union. And how are we going to get this Union back together? How are people who went to war ever going to come back together into a United States again? And Thanksgiving Day, you know, establishing this national holiday was just another way for him to try to get people to start thinking about praying together again, coming back together again as a nation. But that was part of what was on his mind. Because it's interesting, in the South, they had Thanksgiving Days, right? Sure. Was, was the South more religious uh, than the North? Was that an issue back then? That was an issue. Um, the Confederate States of America, when Jefferson Davis, when they started this, they complained that the United States, they loved the founders and they thought that they were following the founders. So did the North. They thought they were following. They both claimed to be following the founders. But the one thing that the Southerners, a lot of Southerners complained about with the founding was that it wasn't explicitly Christian. So the Confederate States of America made that more explicit uh, in writing and they had their own Thanksgiving days. 
I mean, Jefferson Davis would proclaim Thanksgiving Day, so there would be Confederate Thanksgiving Days during the Civil War, too. And again, that notion, I don't think people fully understand, that it was, you would have Thanksgiving Days more than once a year. Sure. So when, when's a time that the Confederacy may declare a Thanksgiving Day? Would it be after a battle, or uh -huh. would it be after, you know, a, a good event or a bad event to, to lift spirits, or when, when and how often? Usually it would be after a big battle, about after a victory, the same in, in the North. Uh, Lincoln proclaims uh, several Thanksgiving days before the official Thanksgiving day, like after Gettysburg and different play times. So it would be occasional, again, just like in the earlier period, the colonists, the Puritans, would proclaim days of fasting when things weren't going well. So there'd be things, days of Thanksgiving when things did go well, days of fasting when they didn't go well. So you look back at the origin, and it's fascinated, fascinating how we got to where we are. And, and how, how would you look at how it's evolved? It is much more commercial now, everything is. Mm -hmm. and what would Abraham Lincoln, what would, what, what, people all often ask what would the pilgrims think? Mm -hmm. But they were doing something almost somewhat different. Abraham Lincoln established the first Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. how, how do you chart its evolution? I don't think he would, I think he would have been shocked to see how huge it's become, how important commercially it's become. And we recognize the commercial aspect of Thanksgiving rather early on. I mean, thinking about FDR, uh, President Roosevelt, uh, he actually moved the, moved the date back to the third Thursday in November during the Depression to try to give more time for Christmas shopping. Uh, then it was moved back in, in 1941, officially to the fourth Thursday in November. Um, but it just became more commercial at that time, though, in the mid-19th century, the ideas of Christmas, New Year's, these, these holidays were just developing. I mean, there was a Christmas, and people had Christmas, but they had very different ideas of what Christmas was and what Thanksgiving was. I mean, in the 19th century, a lot of people gave gifts on New Year's, you know. So it was just a, there was a holiday season, but nothing like to the level that we have now in terms of Black Fridays and Black Thursdays and that kind of thing. And what this may be, beyond the role of a historian, but what could our culture learn from it, where it began? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what could we learn? Certainly we're all aware of the Black Friday aspect of it all, but what, what do you think we could learn? I think one thing, I think if Lincoln could look ahead, and when Lincoln was establishing this holiday, I think he would want this day to be a day in which the nation comes together, thinks about the importance of the nation and the importance that citizens have to one another and their reliance upon one another, how they depend upon one another for their daily lives, and how they, and Lincoln believed in providence as well. You know, he also was not really what we would call an evangelical, but he had a sense that there was a sovereignty, there was a, a, a God. Um, so whether or not we believe in God or whether or not people necessarily believe in God today, Lincoln would want them to look at the importance of the nation and the importance of how community is important, how they depend upon each other, and how important families are to one another. I think he probably would want that to be part of the legacy of Thanksgiving. But unity was most on his mind, and the bringing fact that, people together. Well, yeah, and the fact that George Washington considered this to be so important, right. it shows that there's a, an understanding that if there are tough times, mm -hmm. an appropriate response is to, to look at what you have and be thankful. That's right. That's right. And that's and, important to them because of their idea of providence, their idea that there was a guiding presence, and their idea that, that we were all part of some nation that was bigger than, the, that it's in, than its individual parts. So the, you said there was a woman who, what was her name? Sarah, Sarah Hale. Hale. Mm -hmm. Sarah Hale. Mm -hmm. She really advocated, advocated for this. Advocated it. Mm -hmm. Did she help shape the idea of a turkey and, mm -hmm. and dressing and, and that kind of thing and, and kind of the you know, home and garden sort of yes. Thanksgiving. How, how did that come about? The HGTV of the 19th century. I mean, <laughs> it, it, she was uh, very much that, that way. I mean, she came out of New Hampshire, so she came out of Puritan territory, kind of New England. And so she had heard of Thanksgivings from the beginning. She knew about the Thanksgiving culture. She really valued what Thanksgiving meant to people and what it could mean as bringing people together, the family together. So, and she, it was a and she was the editor of the major ladies magazine of the time, what they called the late, you know, Goaty's Lady Book. So that magazine featured a lot of these kind of home like recipe type things and things that women would be interested in. And again, it was a way to bring forth 
how what women do well in the home and how important that is to society. You look at this holiday. Do other countries have a similar holiday? Mm -hmm. They, they do. Other countries do. I mean, I know most about Thanksgiving, and, that, and it's really kind of exported from the United States. Other countries have kind of followed the United States in some of these ways. And it, well, it came from another country. I mean, England, they were having Thanksgivings. That's where the Puritans learned it. After all, they didn't know they were American. They saw, thought this was New England. They, they were starting, they were kind of copying what they needed. That was their culture. So it, it didn't really begin here technically speaking. I mean, if, even in the period that began, they had Thanksgivings in England for fun occasions and fasts and those kinds of things. So as people sit down mm -hmm. for their Thanksgiving meal this year, um, you know, in our final minute or so that's left, what, what, what would you hope that they think about that maybe they hadn't thought about before, but as they sit down for their meal this year, you know, what, what do you hope that they think about and understand? I just think that it's important to reflect on the history and recognize that the idealistic kind of uh, pilgrim view is it, it it has problems I mean it wasn't an idealistic situation you know obviously there was a lot of violence that came out of that um, and it's a time I think to to be thankful and recognize that the nation has had its struggles and um, it's time to re reflect on that and where we are and how that how it came about so I think the history of Thanksgiving is a good lesson on how America how the United States developed. And how we can all deal with um, problems. Mm -hmm. And Well, thank you very much. Thank Dr. You. James P. Byrd, Associate Professor at Vanderbilt, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. And thanks all of you for watching Issues of Faith.